Good morning, students. As the weather is not very comfortable, I am seeing very less number of students inside the class now. Still, we will proceed with our class. In the previous class, we were discussing this uh, exercise about VN bridge oscillator. And uh, I was discussing the last point at that time, the time was up for the meeting. So I am showing in the same slide today. Let me show you the previous slide in which we had discussed the bridge operation. Yeah. Yeah, this one. So here we were discussing the VN bridge oscillator itself in the in the formation of Wheatstone's bridge because at the input the same circuit can be represented as a Wheatstone's bridge. This is not a new circuit, it is the same VN bridge oscillator written in a different fashion. I will show you the previous slide as well. You can see amplifier with the feedback network at the minus terminal and a feedback network at the plus terminal along with the load resistance here. Here the load resistance is shown extra. So the same circuit can be written as a Wheatstone's bridge circuit. Uh, the lower side circuit is the feedback circuit where you can see a lead as well as lag circuit and we had discussed this earlier. So now this is that Wheatstone's bridge circuit. Now we can go for a bridge analysis of the balancing of the bridge. You are already familiar with the galvanometer's uh, uh, usage in the bridge network. You might have already studied it in physics. So this is the physics or in any other relevant course that way. So that way the input circuit is connected as Wheatstone's bridge and when we perform bridge analysis here, we will be getting this particular expression R3 by R4 equals R1 by R2 plus C2 by C1 because R3, R4 are at the right hand side of the bridge and R1, R2, C1, C2 are at the left hand side of the bridge and because of the connections of the capacitors in this manner, we get C2 by C1 here. So when R1 is equal to R2 and when C1 is equal to C2, if you use the same values of components at the left hand side of the bridge, then we will get R3 by R4 is equal to 1 plus 1 equals 2, which means R3 has to be double that of R4. You can see the formula also F0 equals 1 over 2 pi square root of R1 C1 and R2 C2. But when R1 is equal to R2 and C1 is equal to C2, it is R square and C squared, square root of that is RC. RC. So you will get the same formula F0 is equal to 1 over 2 pi RC without the root 6 component here. We had that root 6 component in the normal phase shift oscillator because we had a 3 stage there. Here we don't have that root 6, we directly get 1 over 2 pi RC. So I am showing you the bulb symbol only to have some humorous content for our class, that's all. That means our bulb is glowing or our brain is glowing, that bulb is as good as a brain. You can see the shape there, the shape is the brain only, actually it is the brain which is indicated there. So our brains are glowing with more and more learning. Let me go to the next slide now. I have already discussed about how to compute C, 1 over 2 pi into R into F. So we got the C as 79.62 picofarad. Now coming to the value of R3 and R4, if we choose R4 to be 100 kilo ohms, then R3 must be double that of R4. So R3 must be naturally 200 kilo ohms. This is how we can construct a VN bridge oscillator and we can use it for our applications. Now with this brief recap, let me proceed to the next set of oscillators. Till now we have been discussing phase shift oscillators. 
in the sense in the feedback network we introduced a specific network which introduced 180 degree phase shift and that is how we used to satisfy the bar cost and criteria and that is how the circuit used to work like oscillator even the future oscillators we are going to discuss are also based on phase shift only bar cost and criteria is going to be uh, met there also but the feedback circuit is slightly different from the one which we have been seeing till now till now we have been seeing the feedback network which is constructed using r and c from now on we will see the oscillators in which feedback circuit is constructed using l and c so let me proceed we have something called tuned oscillator circuits different types of oscillators can be obtained by choosing the reactance elements in the feedback network in our previous circuit we had one resistive element and one reactive element but you can see the block diagram here we have x1 x2 and x3 now they are connected in a slightly different way you can see the configuration here in the feedback network whereas this point is the ground point itself the intersection between x1 and x2 is basically ground that is why it is connected to the amplifier also and we have a parallel element x3 that is directly from output to input so we are going to employ inductance and capacitance together for implementing the 180 degree phase shift as well as for providing the feedback to the input and why is it called as tuned oscillator because you already know whenever l and c are together there can be resonance inductance stores magnetic energy and uh, capacitance stores electrical energy so when the capacitance is actually electrostatic in nature and inductance is actually electrodynamic in nature and when we combine them together as you already know the fundamentals the reactance of the inductance increases with the frequency whereas the reactance of the capacitance decreases with the frequency so when we connect them together there will be a point where the circuit will offer either a minimum resistance or a maximum resistance at a given frequency for any particular frequency you might have already studied this concepts in network analysis where there is series resonance and there is parallel resonance series resonance and parallel resonance where the circuit will offer minimum reactance as well as maximum reactance that is why they are called tuning circuits now such circuits where we use inductance and capacitance together they are also called as tank circuits can anybody tell me why they are called as tank circuits answer for the tuning circuits i have already told you it is going to offer either a minimum reactance or a maximum reactance at a given frequency so tuning means what basically in the olden days when they had analog radio there used to be a tuning control along with the volume control and there used to be a coarse tuning control and a fine tuning control there used to be a variable capacitor inside the uh, radio receiver now when you have analog radios are seen only in the museums we all have the digital radios nowadays where there is a digital signal processor which is digitally tuning for obtaining a particular station of choice so that used to be called as tuning means selecting a particular frequency of operation is called tuning that way l and c together can be used as tuning circuits now my question was why are they called as tank circuits any answer so because they are storing energy right inductance is storing magnetic energy and capacitance is storing electrical energy because of that they together are going to store both types of energies so it is called as a tank circuit just like a tank stores water these uh, elements store energy so using these reactive elements it is possible to construct tuned oscillators 
and we will have to use their value in such a way that they will have to provide 180 degree phase shift also and they will offer resonance at a given frequency. This resonance was not there in our previous circuits. The resonance was not there in the previous circuits. In the previous circuits, uh, we used to only use that RC element to introduce phase shift. Now these uh, tank circuits are going to do two purpose now. One is 180 degree phase shift also and one is frequency selection also by means of tuning. You can see this table now, oscillator type, we can see x1, x2, x3. If x1 and x2 are capacitance, if x3 is inductance, then it is called Colpitt's oscillator. And if x1 and x2 are Hartley, and if uh, x3 is capacitance, then it is called Hartley oscillator. x1 and x2 are inductance, and x3 is capacitance, then it is called Hartley oscillator. Now, without using X3, if we can use the LC and the LC only, just like we had a VN bridge configuration, in the same way we can have such configuration here also, where we will avoid completely X3, we will only use X1 and X2. Then that is called tuned input, tuned output oscillator. We are going to see the Colpitt's oscillator and the Hartley oscillator only. And there is a trick for you have to remember, you have this C and you have this C, you have this C. So, if X1 is capacitance and X2 is capacitance, anyhow this is going to be ground. Let me put a ground symbol here. Even though it is not indicated, let me indicate it, this is ground. So, if X1 and X2, X2's one end is connected to output, X1's other end is connected to input and both ends are connected to ground. The other two ends are connected to ground. Whereas X3 is connected directly between output and input. Now if there are two capacitances, you can remember it as culprits. Similarly, if there are two inductances, let us say X1 and X2 are inductances, the unit for inductance is Henry and that H is here, that way you can easily remember. Hartley oscillator is containing two inductances. Colpitts and Hartley is the name of two scientists who worked on such oscillators. That is why to honor them, the same names are kept. So otherwise, these are very simple circuits. Amplifier remains the same amplifier as we have been discussing earlier. And we are using these reactive elements in the feedback path. That's all. Otherwise, the circuit is quite simpler. Let me proceed further. First, let us see the Colpitt's oscillator, where you can see from the output, one capacitance is connected to ground, and even from the input, one more capacitance is connected to ground, and from the output, inductance is directly connected to the input side. Now, the complete left side portion is amplifier and Instead of showing the feedback path at the bottom, here the author Malvino has shown it at the right side. Otherwise, it is one and the same. We can write the same circuit below also. In fact, we can write this circuit in this manner also. The feedback circuit can be written like this also. With one capacitance to ground. and one more capacitance to ground. Later on, let me change the color of the pen. Right now, I am uh, writing using the default color. You can see this. Now, this is C1 and this is C2 and this is L. Sorry, I think I wrote wrongly. Let me erase. As per the circuit diagram, let me write. Now this is at the input side, so C2 
this is a doubt put side c1 so you can see from the output c1 is connected to ground from the output c1 is connected to ground and then there is inductance from output to input and at the input c2 is connected to ground so even the author has written the circuit in a slightly complicated manner the same feedback circuit can be written in this manner also and even though the c3 is there c3 is only as a coupling capacitor why c3 is used here can anybody tell me why this c3 is used here okay as no one is responding let me tell this is an amplifier circuit at the left hand side so at the left hand side generally when we bias this circuit the collector will be at vcc by 2 collector will be at vcc by 2 dc now when this is dc the dc should not come back to the base if this dc comes back to the base the q point gets affected here so we are fixing the q point by means of a vbb the base voltage so we require an isolation between output and input as far as dc is concerned we are feeding back only the ac signal dc should not be connected back to the base that is why we are connecting this c3 that c3 can be here also it does not matter let me stop annotating and let me annotate again we can actually short this C3 and we can connect this capacitance here also. It serves the same purpose. There will be no difference. And this capacitance is providing a DC isolation between output and input. That's all. Now you may also think that when this DC is there at the V out also there will be VCC by 2 DC. It will be there. There will be this DC VCC by 2 and if at all you want a pure AC at the output, then again, here one more capacitance needs to be connected. Here also one more capacitance needs to be connected. But that the author has not indicated here. So the purpose of C3 is provi for to provide DC isolation between output and input because inductance is passing DC always. So I showed you that the feedback circuit can be written in other ways also. You need not write the same circuit which is already there here. Why I am telling this is many times students will simply look at the circuit and they will try to write the same circuit in the test and in the exam. It is not necessary that the author has followed this style, we will have to follow the same style. He has justly connected both of these points to the ground common. It is ground only, ground can be written anywhere in the circuit. As you know, you can see here, grounds are connected differently below R2, RE and CE. That can be followed and feedback circuit can be written in a different style. Otherwise, it is an amplifier and with the feedback network. Now, why this RF choke? What may be the purpose of this RF choke? RF means radio frequency. Choke means basically an inductor. Later on let me tell you why the word choke is used. But my question now is, we used to have one collector resistance earlier. Instead it is replaced by a RF choke now. What may be the purpose? Anybody can tell me? Okay, let me tell, if you connect one collector resistance, then also the circuit will work. You might have already worked with the lab experiments and you may be knowing this already. Which means, even if you have a collector resistance, circuit will work like oscillator only. Now, choke means what? Basically, choking means breathlessness. Let us say you are into water and when you suddenly come out, you may say that I was choking inside, which basically means breathlessness. Now here, an inductor is generally used as a choke. 
in the olden days or even nowadays we are using tube lights at home nowadays anyhow we are replacing them with the led lamps or with the cfl lamps but we always also used the regular lengthy tube light so in the tube light there used to be a big inductor that inductor is called as a choke because initially there is something called starter in the tube light which is nothing but a small vacuum tube or a glow tube with the small capacitance in parallel and actually tube light requires a large potential in the beginning for the filament to get heated up so what happens there is that small glow tube is connected in parallel with the ac line so as soon as you switch on that ac will get short circuited by that glow tube because there are two metal elements inside that starter when it shorts then there will be no power supply across the tube so again it opens up because there is no power supply it opens up when it opens up again there will be voltage and again it shorts this happens for a few seconds in the beginning and because of the shorting and opening shorting and opening it creates a very large impulse across the filaments of the tube light even the input voltage is 220 volts because of the shorting and opening inside the starter it produces more than 1000 volts during which the filaments will heat up when the filaments will heat up the mercury vapor will have discharge across it and that is when the tube light glows after the tube light glows the tube light works like a least resistant path for the flow of current and that is when the starter will not work anymore later on even if you remove the starter also tube light will keep working there they connect one large inductance in series and that inductance purpose was that only at the output side there is a short circuit and open circuit at the input side 220 volt cac should be safe otherwise the fuse connected to the house's power supply itself will blow off because the 1000 volts is only across the tube light not at the left side not at the other side of the switch so in between that inductance is working like a ac blocking element it is choking the ac just like we have a breathing our breathing is also ac only right we breathe in and we breathe out that means our breathing cycle is an alternating cycle same way that ac supply will be choked because of the inductance that is why that word choke came and even now even when, when people use that lengthy tube light also there is something called electronic choke where it will instant, instantaneously start there electronic choke means it contains a, a high frequency oscillator inside because of the high frequency now the tube light starts up immediately not because of the high voltage that is how they have done a variation in the design so that is the meaning of choke now the purpose of connecting an RF choke here is now as we know this uh, oscillator is going to work in radio frequencies we had seen the phase shift oscillator VN bridge as well as the normal phase shift oscillator they were working with the lesser frequency range in the audio frequency range but Hartley and Colpitt's oscillator can work in the radio frequency range that means more than 100 kilohertz so in such a case we are going to use Hartley and Colpitt's oscillator for producing larger value of frequencies that is why we are employing inductance and capacitance otherwise you may think when you already have a RC phase shift oscillator why should you go for other oscillators at all the reason is this RC phase shift oscillator will not be able to produce much larger frequencies because there we are using resistance and capacitance even if you use it with our design the higher frequencies will have a distortion there because of the RC network there whereas in the case of LC network we will not face such distortion there that is why we are using Colpitts and Hartley oscillators at a larger frequency range now when these circuits are used for radio frequencies the radio frequency should not affect my power supply that is the idea here we have this VCC VCC should be very smooth DC now if this VCC is derived from a battery we will have no problem because battery is very stable but if this VCC is derived from a rectifier circuit 
rectifier will have a filter capacitor at the output. If the filter capacitor is not of a very large value, even this radio frequency will affect as a noise at VCC and VCC may have radio frequency noise. Just to prevent that, here is a RF choke connected, that is all. Otherwise, if you connect one RC here, let us say collector resistance, now the resistance will pass AC also to the power supply and the power supply will have high frequency noise. To have a very smooth supply voltage to the circuit, an RF choke is connected here. That is the purpose. That means it is choking the radio frequency. That is all. Otherwise, there is no other purpose. So, let me continue. This is the AC equivalent circuit of the same oscillator where you can see there is a loop here. In the feedback circuit itself, there is a loop. Means, can we say capacitances are connected in series or connected in parallel? Can anybody tell me whether these capacitances are connected in series or are they connected in parallel? Let us say I write it this way. Okay, some students have given the answer parallel and some students have given the answer series. Let us see, I, I again, let me annotate once again, instead of disabling the chat box, I disable the annotate button, let me write it once again. Okay, some students are saying series, some students are saying parallel. Now look at this, capacitances two ends are connected to ground and one is connected to input, one is connected to output. Now in this way if you say output to input if I travel, I can travel this way, I can travel this way, I am travelling from output to input, between output and input there is inductance. Now, between output input, I go to ground, I come back to input. Now, I can say that the capacitors are in series. Capacitors not exactly in parallel. You know why? In between them, there is inductance. And we are discussing the AC signals feedback, right? If it is DC, then we can say the capacitors are in parallel because inductor passes DC. But here, the feedback signal is AC. When the feedback signal is AC, the upper two points of the capacitors are not actually shorted because in between them there is an AC isolation because of inductance and we are actually feeding back the AC only. There is no 100% AC isolation but to, to some extent inductance is offering that isolation. So we can say the capacitors are in series and there is a loop, you can see a loop from the ground through the inductor back to the ground. That loop is shown here. Now because of this loop, this works like a resonant element, it works like a tank circuit, it works like a tuning circuit. So that is the AC equivalent of this particular uh, culprit's oscillator, showing only the feedback path because all other things are now immaterial for us because they are all DC elements. Uh, as far as the biasing is concerned. Okay, so the conclusion is here the capacitors are in series. When the capacitors are in series, the equivalent capacitance is given by 1 over C equivalent is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. Just like when two resistors are in parallel, we use the same formula. 
when the capacitors are in series we use the same formula you already know that between resistors and capacitors it the formula is of the reverse order if the resistors are in series we use r equals r1 plus r2 whereas if capacitors are in parallel we use c equals c1 plus c2 here they are not in parallel they are in series even they look like they are having a parallel connection it is not like that they are not having parallel connection because of the inductor in between so they are in series so using this concept we have the equation for the output frequency the voltage divider bias sets up the q point for biasing this you already know rf choke has a high inductive reactance it has a choke means this particular inductance is of a much larger value than this particular l l is part of the formula for the output frequency whereas rf choke is basically as i told you it is to have a isolation between the output frequency and the power supply itself so that way it is basically a complete ac isolator it has a very high inductive reactance if people want to use it they can use it now if at all they are they are using a battery operated colpits oscillator then no need of rf choke there they can directly connect a collector resistance the complication here is when you use a rf choke when you bias this amplifier now instead of the value of rc you should take the value of the inductance itself its reactance itself in ohms that is a complication while designing the amplifier itself so to avoid the design complications they can connect the resistor also here so the component c1 c2 and l provide the feedback for oscillations the feedback voltage across c2 drives the base and sustains the oscillation there is a feedback voltage across c2 you can visualize that from the base to the ground there is this capacitance you have to visualize the earlier feedback circuit which i have been writing that is easy to understand so that way anyhow c3 is a short as far as ac is concerned so the voltage across c2 is going to drive the base that way it is going to sustain the oscillations driving in the sense not with respect to dc it is with respect to ac itself so that is that is working as an input here so the resonant frequency when we perform the frequency domain analysis for this particular circuit the exact frequency fr or resonant frequency is 1 over 2 pi square root of l into c equivalent square root of q square by q square plus 1 that c equivalent is c1 c2 by c1 plus c2 i have already mentioned you about it the capacitors are in series what is this q q is basically called as a quality factor of any resonant circuit in general let me write one frequency response here in general let us say we have a response like this let us say let me change the color this is the resonant point x axis is frequency and y axis is voltage output when you tune to an fm radio station you want exactly the resonant frequency right let us say you are tuning to a station 92.8 megahertz in fm radio you want it to be exactly 92.8 because there are neighboring stations there can be a 92.61 station 92.81 station 92. Point, sorry 93 megahertz one station that way i am giving a crude example it can be 92.7 also 92.9 also 93.1 also where they indicate the center frequency of the station now in between two fm radio stations there is a uh, stop band there stop band in the sense 
if one radio free station is working at uh, 92.1 megahertz now the next station is allocated the frequency of 92.3 megahertz there's a 200 kilohertz gap between two radio stations that is purposefully done so as to have better tuning because we will never have any ideal oscillator ideal oscillator means let me write the curve below Ideal oscillator means you should have a response like this. You should have a response like this. That means at a given frequency only oscillator will work. Oscillator will not produce any other frequencies. That is how we presume. But the practical oscillator is the one which I have shown you here in the picture. Let me remove this. Because you can easily see that red line. Ideally this red line is expected. Oscillator should only work, your oscillator should work only at 92.1 megahertz. But oscillator will have output even at other frequencies slightly. You can see it is gradually rising up and gradually coming down. That is because of the component tolerances and it is because of the non-ideality of the circuit. The circuit is not actually completely ideal. So let us say we design an oscillator exactly for let us say 150 kilohertz. Now the oscillator may give frequency distortions in the sense even though 150 kilohertz is also available we can have spectral components of 149 kilohertz. We can have spectral components of 151 kilohertz also because of the non-ideality of the circuit. As such, everything is non-ideal in nature. In nature, nothing is ideal or nothing is perfect. But we are trying to bring it nearer to ideal or nearer to perfection in our designs. So for that matter, you can see that red line is the ideal oscillator, whereas the blue line is the practical oscillator. It will have other frequencies also, but at a lesser amplitude. Now, the better the oscillator means it must be narrow. That means this response which I am showing you in the blue line, it must be as narrow as possible, then that is a better oscillator. That is where we have something called QR, Q. We have something called Q. Q means FR divided by bandwidth. Now for this also you can obtain a bandwidth. Let me write in a different color. You can come to a 3 dB cutoff point. From the maximum, you can come to minus 3 dB cutoff point. You are, you are already familiar with this minus 3 dB. That is a half power cutoff point. So you can come to a minus 3 dB cutoff point and from there, you can measure that frequency here. You can measure that frequency here and you can measure the bandwidth. Now this thing, let me write it below. This thing is now bandwidth. Now you can see Q is defined as FR divided by BW, resonant frequency divided by bandwidth. The lesser the bandwidth, larger the Q. Larger the Q, better is the oscillator. That is the idea. That is where Hartley oscillators and Colpitts oscillators are supposed to be having a larger Q factor when compared to the VN bridge oscillator. The VN bridge oscillator or the RC phase shift oscillator will not have a larger Q point. Can anybody tell me why? Can anybody tell me why? Okay, the answer is that RC phase shift oscillator is using three stage RC network and even in the VN bridge we have four uh, components, two resistors, two capacitors. Now there are always tolerances among these resistors and capacitors. You already know that resistors will have at least 5% tolerance or 2% tolerance. Capacitors will have 10% tolerance. So that way, uh, because of the tolerances and because of the non-energy of the amplifier itself, the Q factor of the phase shift oscillator 
in the case of RC and Vein Bridge is actually much lesser. In the case of Colpers and Hartley, it is larger because we are using pure reactive elements here, pure inductances and pure capacitances. We are not using resistance at all. So that way, if at all we want to have a larger Q, we should have a lesser bandwidth. We should have a lesser bandwidth means we should have very accurate values in our circuit. That is about the Q factor or quality factor. This quality factor is applicable to any tuning circuit or to any resonant circuit as such, not just oscillators. It is applicable to any such circuit. We want an ideal oscillator, we are getting a practical oscillator where we want Q factor to be larger. Okay, let me stop annotating now. So that is why this Q is coming here. If the Q is lesser, then we will have to use this formula, square root of Q square by Q square plus 1. Now, if the Q is much larger, it does not make a difference now. Let us say Q is greater than 10. Now, inside the square root, you will have 10 squared divided by 10 squared plus 1. That is 100 divided by 101. 100 divided by 101, the, when we take the square root, it will be much less. So, it can be ignored this particular factor that if the Q is larger than 10, this complete portion of the formula can be ignored. So, when it is ignored, we will have 1 over 2 pi square root of L into C equivalent. That C equivalent is nothing but C1, C2 by C1 plus C2. In this manner, we can design the Colpitts oscillator. Now, the starting condition for oscillation is initially A beta must be greater than 1 or A must be greater than 1 by beta. Gradually, when the system attains stability, it will automatically become A beta equals 1. That is why in the earlier circuit, I had shown you the tungsten lamp. However, in the present circuits, we are not using any such tungsten lamp. The system will attain stability on its own because of the feedback and until then, a beta should be gradually greater than 1. Actually, that is going to happen when the transistor does not come into the uh, middle of the load line in the beginning. Anyhow, as soon as you switch on the circuit, transistor will be in the cutoff region only initially. Gradually, it comes to the uh, active region in the case of VJT. So, starting condition of oscillation is always initially A beta is greater than 1. That means A is equal to 1 over beta. Now, the feedback fraction to the oscillator is beta is equal to C1 by C2. You can remember the feedback circuit where C1, C2 are in series as far as the AC signal is concerned. So, that way the feedback factor is C1 by C2 and the minimum voltage gain AV for the oscillation to work has to be C2 by C1. Why? A beta has to be equal to 1, right? If A beta has to be equal to 1, C1 by C2 into C2 by C1 is going to be unity. But initially, A will be greater than 1 because of the circuit conditions. Let me show you the circuit once again. You can see this C1 and C2. C1 at the output side, C2 at the input side. So, the feedback factor is C1 by C2 because the two ends of the capacitors are connected to ground. You can see here again. Here it is C1, here it is C2. In between, there is a division happening. So, the feedback factor beta is C1 by C2. AV has to be minimum C2 by C1 or AV has to be a reciprocal of beta if the oscillator has to work that way. Now, with this, let me stop today's class. Regarding the coupling, I will discuss in the next class. Let me not discuss things in a hurry now. Okay, I am ending the class for now. See you in the next class. Take care, take care of your health, remain safe, remain healthy. Bye-bye.